What's up everybody? Pumpkin here. So I uploaded an ethne deck maybe a week or two ago um, that I was doing fairly well with. Um, this is basically the same list uh, with a few card adjustments and those card adjustments really really help the deck out uh, based on the title of the video and uh, the title of the deck. Uh, the Great Oak is a very good card in this deck um, simply because you row stack naturally with cards like Sentinels and Volunteers, uh, Gabor, and it's just a really, really strong finisher. Uh, if you compare it to Shoop, they're both 13 provisions. Uh, they're both worth, like, Shoop, best case scenario, if you're playing it for points, is 12, unless you're removing an artifact. The Great Oak is typically between 12 and 16 points. That's pretty good, uh, especially for Scoia'tael. So, Oak is a phenomenal card. Um, I'm not gonna run through a really detailed guide. It's pretty similar. It plays almost the same way. Um, I'll run through the cards that are different. Oak, great card for round three, great card for round two if you're getting blood. Ithlin is really strong on uh, Skags, pretty normal. Dragon's good. Geralt, um, you don't have to play this card. Uh, originally, I was playing Sword. I was playing uh, Gated Sword instead. Uh, my issue with this card is it's not great against monsters, and because this deck is kind of like a mid-range oriented list, mid-range typically does poorly against monsters because monster plays a lot of tall things. Uh, you don't find a lot of value against them. So I felt Geralt was necessary. It can break in some matchups, but even in Scoia'tael, I'll, almost every deck is playing Gorgon outside of like Dana. So honestly, it, it doesn't brick very often. Um, if you think it's going to brick, you can mulligan it, but uh, it definitely helps the monster matchup. It, it makes it winnable. Without, without Geralt, it's pretty hard to win. So I like the inclusion of Geralt, but you're more than welcome to switch it for uh, Gated Sword, or if you really want, you can switch it for Cleaver. Cleaver's pretty good too, because it works with all the dwarfs in your deck. Um, and it has the same function. If your opponent uses Tactical Advantage on an engine, you can Cleaver it, or in this case, you can Geralt it, right? So that flex is still there. Um, I just, I was running into a lot of uh, Geralt's on ladder, or a lot of monsters on ladder, and I needed the Geralt. Uh, and because I was pushing for 2600, uh, Geralt was necessary because there were a lot of monster players at that uh, MMR. Roach. Roach is an interesting card. I've been testing this card a lot with this deck and I really, really like it. Um, when I lose coin flips, so I go first, the extra tempo is really nice. It allows me to pass on three if I need to. Um, when I win coin flip and go second, I typically play three to four bronzes in round one. I basically just dump all the bronzes out of my hand in round one. Uh, and then I pass and go into round two. In round two, my opponent sometimes tries to bleed me. Well, if they try to bleed me, having Roach is super, super good uh, because typically they don't expect it. A lot of times a Woodland player or a Gurney player will bleed me uh, and I'll end up going a card up because I just, I can keep up because I have pretty good cards and I have an Oak finisher towards the end uh, and Roach definitely helps with that. So I do like it. The extra thinning is nice. Uh, Any thin to increase the odds of finding Oak is typically worth it. So uh, yeah, Roach is pretty good. Once again, if you don't like this card or you don't want to play it, feel free to drop it for a Sword or Cleaver. Gabor, really strong carryover card. Very strong in round two uh, if you're getting blood. Very strong in round one if you think you're going to get blood in round two. It's just a good card in general. Malayan, good card. Uh, Gorgon, good card. Ida, there's a decent amount of no unit decks um, when I was playing. So I threw an Ida. If you don't like Ida, you can play Cleaver, you can play Sword, uh, and you can downgrade Dwarven Mercenary. Um, yeah, there, there's definitely flex on some of these cards. Uh, there's no Regis in this deck, because I, I felt like Regis was overkill. More often than not, it's, you don't need that extra removal. Um, the only time I would want Regis is against Northern Realms, which nobody plays, and Dana, which nobody plays, because Ethne is better than Dana right now. So Ida's been nice. Um, I throw it on Immune Dragon if I'm playing against monsters, uh, which is nice because it increases the odds of me having Tall Unit. Uh, and it also denies Caldwell, which is really good. Uh, Sersa, it's a good card. Sheldon, good card. Milva, good card. Uh, Dwarven Mercenary, this is kind of a awkward card. This is not a typical card you see in, well, any deck. No, no, no Gwent deck really plays this card. Uh, it's, it's quite good. So when you lose coin flip and go first, I slam this down and tactical advantage it. Um, it's really nice because it's an extra card or it's an extra dwarf to get your volunteers out. You really want to get your volunteers out in round one. Um, it's just a pretty good card. Uh, sometimes your opponent removes it, sometimes it doesn't. You don't feel bad if it gets removed because it's not that expensive. It's just a good card. I would suggest you try it. Um, it really helps get out your sentinels. So like an ideal round one, if I lose coin flip, I Dwarven Mercenary, Tactical Advantage it. 
Uh, they play a card. If they play a three-point engine, like, I don't know, Wyvern or something, um, I'll ping it with a Dwarven Mercenary and then play Broccolon Sentinel, thin out my Sentinels, and then the turn after I'll thin out my Volunteers. Maybe play another Bronze or two and then get out of the round. Um, yeah. So ideally, you want to thin these two cards out of your hand in round one, uh, if possible. Uh, you don't need to thin Roach out in round one. I typically... Unless I lost coin flip. No, nah, even even if I lose coin flip, I only pull out Roach if I need to. So if my opponent's playing high tempo, I have to match the high tempo with high tempo myself. Um, so yeah, it, it really depends on your opponent. If you're playing against SK, they're probably going to be playing a good amount of tempo. Uh, if you're playing against monsters, probably going to be a good amount of tempo. If you're playing against Northern Realms, not much tempo. Uh, Nilfgaard, not much tempo unless they have Roach. And Squiatel... <laughs> Squiretail mirrors are fun because it's basically you're just going back and forth trying to thin these cards out. Uh, and the rest of the cards are pretty straightforward uh, other than Neophyte. Neophyte you could drop if you really wanted to. Um, the problem is there really aren't better for provision cards for Squiretail. Um These cards suck. These cards are not great. I, I like the proactiveness of Neophytes and, and none of these other cards are proactive. You could play Swordmaster I guess but you don't play that many elves so even if it doesn't die you don't get that much value out of it. You could play Farseer, which is the equivalent of a Neophyte. The Neophytes are more spread out, which is typically better. Uh, the only cards that you would ever consider are like Cutthroat and uh, Scholar, because these are fives for four, and that's pretty good. Um, the downside of these cards is obviously uh, it doesn't boost your Milva, it does not proc on Harmony with Sursa, uh, and they're not proactive, right? Uh, neither of these two cards are proactive. So you're more than welcome to switch them out for uh, the Neophytes for either of these two cards, but I, I personally like the Neophytes because they, they do synergize with the deck in terms of uh, it being a Squaytail unit slash Harmony. Uh, it spreads your units out wide, which is never terrible, uh, and is proactive, and having proactive plays in a mid-range deck can never hurt. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not really going to explain much more. Hopefully the videos uh, help you out. Uh, we did hit 2,600 with this deck yesterday or today on a pro ladder. So it, it is a very good deck. Um, what does it beat? It beats basically everything. Um, or sorry, it can beat everything. Um, the best three decks in the game right now are Bran, uh, Ethne, and Woodlands. Those are the three best decks. Uh, it can beat Woodlands. It can beat uh, Bran, depending on draws. Um, typically in both of those matchups, you don't want to win round one, uh, unless you win coin flip and they play low tempo. If they play low tempo, you feel you can go ahead and win round one. Um, I'm not going to go into niche different scenarios and matchups because there's really no point. Uh, it's a good deck. It's very straightforward. If you like winning and you like playing Ethne, this is your deck. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hopefully we can find the game. Yay! Pumpkin, did you use that laugh to push monster MMR? Yeah, I did. I used control that laugh for 2500. Woodland's better, but I don't I don't like Woodland's play style. Like that laugh is strictly worse than Woodland, but I feel more comfortable with him because he's control oriented and I like playing control decks. So like uh, 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 uh. Yeah, Ida can buff enemy units, so like you can black blood and then Ida your opponent's card. It's not good, but like you could do it. The Hello Sir Pumpkin I'm still following you dude has been around. No, I haven't seen him. It's been a while. He stopped following me. Hmm. I shall not fail. I don't even have any dorks to get the volunteers out, so I guess I don't really care. With humans, a bythos. We're the best regiment in the whole plowing north. I'll play two of these and pass. <laughs> Am I going to do the math? Pumpkin doing math. Oh, lol. We'll put Mahakam boots to Imperial arses. Nobody passes. Like, monster, like, there's no reason to pass as monsters. Like, you don't mind playing another bronze card. No reason to lose around. 
Nice shirt. It's my Google shirt. They're sponsoring me. If you guys haven't heard of Google, you should check them out. www.google.com. Yeah. Very useful. You guys should check them out. What are they worth? Eh, a few hundred bucks, give or take. A few hundred bucks. I don't know. What's what's Google's worth right now? Is that something like Bing? Bing, you. Do people actually use Bing? Like, Bing is useful for one thing and one thing alone. One billion? At least three money? Google.com slash pumpkin shit? I'm keen. That's rude. You have a discount code for code for Google? Yeah, it's uh, www.google.com slash uh, dicks. We're, uh, we're sponsored by Dick Sporting Goods too, for those of you who didn't know. If we stay up in CA, we just win, right? Uh, he has eight carryover, right? It's not necessarily true. Google is worth 800 billion, according to Google. Yeah, but that doesn't count. You can't Google Google's worth. <laughs> That's cheating. That's something Google would tell you. Can't use Google to Google, silly. We've lived in isolation for too bloody long. Silly. Big sporting goods is banned in my country. Really? Not going immune, because these two, like, this isn't row capped, but like, it's row capped. We're never doing four individual damage, it's never happening. Why is it always the immune one? Ree! Ugh. Pretty good. This card, these cards are so good in monsters. Or in woodland, I should say. He's Gorgon. I don't really give a shit. Do people actually play Gorgon? And Woody? A lesson in humility coming now. I'm just gonna take it now. Take it, boy. I think we win. Even if he has Geralt, we should win. He has no Thrive. These two cards are strong. Yeah, okay. I have one too. Is this even correct? 
No, we might have a spear tip. Oh boy, we're climbing, we're climbing. Oh, we're so close, boys. We're like one game, two games ish. I didn't think we'll get eight, so I guess we're two games away. Probably two, yeah. Oh shit, that was really quick. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, this guy's rank one global. Rank one global. There's actually a chance we get eight points if we beat him. If he's really high rank. Big if. I don't know how high his SK rank is. Somebody could probably go check. His hand's actually pretty good. I like this entire hand. I'm just gonna keep. I guess it doesn't have cucumbers, but other than that, it's a very good hand. Are you 10k? Yeah, we're over 10k. We're at like... What? What are we at? 10150? 10160? Does SK have a Mario's 26, 28? That's really impressive. Like, that's, that's really good. That's very impressive. It's really good. Sisters, That's really good. Hey, listen here. Listen I mean, here. SK's a pretty good faction, so I'm not super surprised. But it's good. It's, it's good. Now we must stick together. We'll go at him I need to go to the bathroom. I need you to play a little slower, please, so I can go to the bathroom. Please? Please? Does he really want to pass on this? All right, don't go too quickly, all right? Give me a sec. Before the Queen of Skellige. Ooh, we got Burnus Skirms out. That's good. Did what? Five eleven play? It's not bad. Might indicate that he wants to get out here. I could play Malayan, but it's not really enough. So we're just gonna play the agitators. If he passes, we'll just play the volunteer. It's pretty straightforward, right? Okay. Nice haircut. Thanks. Not washed. I wash my hands. I always wash my hands. Sure. We're the best regiment in the whole plowing north. I don't know. Is that a good trade? We traded a Malayan Ida for Berna to skirmishers. Eh, it's debatable. I could bleed him. If I'm bleeding, I'm going for a 2-0. Do I really want to 2-0 him? I mean, I 
against Coral. Yeah, that's the problem, but at the same time, like... He might not have drawn Coral, right? And this is where, like, if he doesn't have Coral, we can actually realistically 2-0 him. Can't bleed Coral. Yeah, but I can't guarantee that he has Coral. I don't know. More hog de varie. Like, you can 2 0 Bran pretty consistently if they don't have Coral. But he's high enough rank that I think he's gotten good enough at drawing Coral, so. Okay. You think Coral should get reworked, not nerfed? Um... No, I think Coral just needs to lose the damage. Go from 2 to 1. Or make it so that the first tick, her you know how she has two order, like, clicks? Make it so the first one's zeal, but the second one is actually order. I would like that. This is not another one of those things. He's already blown Burner, right? So this is another one of those things where I play Milva and, like... No, we play Gabor, right? And we force him to blow Milva. Or blow Coral on it. Because Milva's gonna get more value than Gabor. Morkberg. Never had your kneecap broken! RNG, here we go. I guess there is no RNG on this one. Cool. Oh, he's out of discarding, so I can freely play this, right? I don't actually have to kill Coral. I should probably kill that, methinks. Seems obnoxious. Okay, do we ping again and go knight, or do we just play the sentinels? Because I already have the sentinels on the Morkvarga. Oh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't think it really matters. I think we just take the Gorgon now. Unless I'm worried about Geralt. No, I actually like waiting. So the reason I like waiting is... We save value on Harold or... Hjalmar. I mean, if he has Gorgon, I don't really care, because it gives me a Geralt target, and I'm okay with that. So if he actually has Gorgon, some play it, some don't. I don't know. It's either Gorgon or... Oh, okay, he definitely doesn't play Gorgon if he plays that. That's for sure. None shall tread on us. Not God flopping. Am I scared of cock? Rank one player playing cock. I highly doubt it. No, I don't think so. His hand is Hjalmar and two other cards. Mm. 
should be able to figure it out what it is, but I can't because I have no idea. I need to start memorizing these lists. Yeah, they BDM? No. Muzzle? Yeah, I guess it could be muzzle. Sure, we can play around muzzle, I guess. Little as melons, you're one dead thunder heat. We can play around muzzle.